In preparing any type of written document, be it a magazine article, news article, a website blog, or an essay, the quality of that written piece is ultimately dependent upon the quality of the research that is conducted. In this lesson, we're going to look at a procedure for conducting scholarly research versus non-scholarly references and how to avoid uh, material that is a little more questionable. So in this case, we're going to assume that we're preparing a, an essay that will serve as a narrative for one of our documentaries in a journalism class. Now, I've loaded up a couple of sites. In this case, our focus is going to be Leonard Cohen. And I wanted to take a look at the differences in the quality and objectivity of the information that uh, one is researching. So in this case I googled Leonard Cohen fans and I stumbled upon this music blog and if you go through the article first off you'll notice that uh, it is filled with a lot of I. So really this is a subjective opinion and it's a personal opinion and it's not really based upon fact. It's based upon um, someone's personal emotional experience and their appreciation of the individual. So this is not exactly an article we want to use because the author is not necessarily an expert in this field, really it is just a fan and their article is not based upon facts that you'd necessarily want to use in uh, reviewing uh, the um, the life of the musician an article that in other words would have been founded upon some solid first-hand accounts and anecdotes and research now here's kind of a middle-of-the-road reference Wikipedia the articles uh, in Wikipedia generally tend to be fairly sound the problem with Wikipedia though is, is that you never know who the author is so again it could be a major fan, typically even a fan who's writing in in a wiki, often there may be one or several editors and authors who uh, add to the article and it does tend to be written from a more objective point of view. However, what I do like about wikis is if you scroll down to the very bottom of the articles, you'll notice that there is a fairly comprehensive reference list and if you use this reference list you'll be able to actually link up and find uh, books uh, or magazine articles by established authors uh, and that may lead you to more scholarly material itself so wikis are really a good uh, starting point if you will now a more top-of-the-line reference would be that published by experts in the field uh, professionals who are hired to actually conduct research and to really dig up important facts on the topic that you're writing about. In this case we used eLibrary and and now eLibrary is a resource that contains uh, professional publications and in this case it is an article from Maclean's magazine which is a very well established uh, magazine in Canada and there's an article here on Leonard Cohen and we also found a second article here on Leonard Cohen in eLibrary. Now once you have found some scholarly articles the second stage in the research process is to actually document these articles and in a Word document and typically what I'd ask students to do is to copy the entire article and then to go to Word and to paste the article in its entirety. Secondly, I'd ask them to copy the URL up here. So let me do Control A to select the entire URL, copy, Control C, go back over here and just above the title of the article I'd ask them to paste the URL. Next I'm going to go get my second article which was an interview with Leonard Cohen in Billboard magazine and I click and drag all the way to the bottom selecting or highlighting the entire text then I go to the edit menu I copy and once again I come to my research document and I go to edit paste let me scroll right to the top here just above this article 
I'm going to paste the URL. So let me go back to the website, click in the URL field of the website, go to Edit Select All to select the entire address, go to Edit Copy, back over to my research document, and paste. And there we go, we have the second link for this article. These articles are now accessible by anyone, such as your teacher, who wants to review some of the information. Now another source of scholarly information is that of books and it's perhaps the most scholarly and objective. Now you obviously can't copy the text out of a book and simply paste it into your document. So in this case what we'd ask students to do is to jot down the main points of the book. The, those parts of the book which contain information that are pertinent to your topic. So here I have a list of two scholarly printed publications the first book and it's listed in APA format and just below that we have the main points of the book and below that I already have the second book and the main points pertaining to this book so I typed this out earlier and I come over here to my document one and paste it and there we go and now I've got a very complete document of information that I have read. Now the next step in scholarly research is to actually go through the article and highlight in yellow those passages as you're reading through, highlight the passages that you feel are most applicable to the topic that you're investigating. Let's say you thought this was really important. Cohen has practiced on and off for the last three decades with his Roshi or teacher, spending the majority of his time there in recent years. So let's say you find that this, just this section, is important. Now you go up into Word here and you go to this little ABC highlight tool and you click on that and then you highlight that and that indicates to your teacher that you think this passage is important. Now once you've done that, the last step in this research process is not only to identify important passages but to comment on them. So we want you to tell us why you think a certain passage that you highlighted was important. At the end of the uh, yellow highlighting, click your cursor there and go insert comment. Now when you insert a comment, it's important to demonstrate that you comprehend that which you've just highlighted. However, it's also important to go beyond comprehension and demonstrate some insight, link it to real world knowledge, and, and express why such a passage is significant. Now once this is all done, you should save your research document. Uh, be sure to put your name in there. So let's go with John Smith. And below that put the course and the date. Okay. Now we're going to go save as. We'll put it in a place where we can find it in our documents and name it accordingly. So put your name first, your last name, so in this case Smith underscore research, the label of the assignment, underscore journalism and save. Typically when a teacher receives a lot of emailed assignments they will have a folder for that student and it'll make it easier for them to go through your folder and find that exact assignment uh, should they need to go through their assessment. As per the teacher they have access to this rubric and you have access to this rubric which allows you to really go through meticulously and see exactly what you have to do when you're conducting your research and what are some of the more important uh, points you need to uh, reflect upon and demonstrate uh, during the research process. And typically once your research is reviewed it may be sent back to you as I've done in this case and I've got a whole highlighted section telling the student what I thought of their research and uh, reflecting upon everything that they had highlighted and commented upon.